So video number nine. Uh, this will be a short one. Uh, I just wanted to show a technique for adding paneling or separation lines to your mesh uh, using ZBrush and DynaMesh. Um, but first, real quick, what I mean by paneling and separation lines is on man-made objects, there's typically a groove or multiple grooves that kind of indicate how the how the thing goes together. Like, like okay, so here's my Xbox controller, right? And on the side here, you see this nice swoop that's got going on? Uh, that's a separation line that continues pretty much around the entire thing. And you know, if you build this prop and don't include that separation line, it's not going to look you know, as authentic as it could. So real quick, we're going to jump into Moto and talk about a shape that we're going to use. Then we'll go into ZBrush and I'll show you a cool technique with the um, split curve brush. So hang on. So here we are in Modo, and I've sort of skipped ahead a little bit. Uh, I just uh, went into Mesh Fusion and created a, a test shape here. It's just something that I don't know, looks like something you might build one day. So it's got a little, you know, it's got a body. It's got a main spout here. Um, I've allocated like what looks like kind of like a pull handle thing on top uh, with the idea that we'll add some kind of a pull out lid up here. So yeah, this is really about it. Uh, this is the mesh that came out of uh, Mesh Fusion. Uh, you can see it's a mess, but yeah, I don't care about that right now. So I'm going to fire this over to ZBrush, and I'll see. I'll catch you over there. So now we're in ZBrush, and I've brought the mesh in, uh, as you can see. And real quick, we're just going to run through some steps for adding some quick cuts in panel lines uh, into this mesh. And you'll be surprised how easy this is. So uh, I've hit this mesh with a DynaMesh because I want a decent amount of resolution. And if you look at my DynaMesh settings, it's just a matter of turning off uh, Polish and Project and turning on Groups. And turning on Groups means that when I DynaMesh the mesh, uh, it's going to respect my poly groups. And you'll see why that's important in a second. Uh, it's actually the linchpin to why this works. So I'm, I'm going to use my slice curve tool. And slice curve is nice because um, it doesn't clip and it doesn't trim. It just splits geometry, which is exactly what I want. So with the slice curve tool, uh, if I make a little curve right here and I say that's the shape of the panel I want to have that that little nubby pulls out. So I let go of that there. Uh, and that's going to slice through the mesh, you know, like a cheese cutter and make me two poly groups, which if I do shift F, you can see here, there's two separate colors on the mesh now. So with that in place, if I redo the DynaMesh with groups turned on, mind you, you can see that now I get a split. And to accentuate that split, what I end up doing is I just grab my smooth tool, I just hold down shift and run around this edge to lock in that um, that panel line or that split and really that's about it uh, at this point you can export this back to your modeling application uh, retopo over to get your low poly and bake out your normal maps and your normal maps will have nice nice panel lines on them that uh, add a certain amount of, of reality to your prop. So real quick, we'll throw another one in here. Let's say I want the neck to come off. And wait till that wire cuts through the mesh. There we go. Redyne a mesh. Smooth it out. So you see how quick that is. So if you wanted to make a cut across like here to put a body panel across there and then you know, do a panel for each of the legs and then do maybe a, a split down from here to here then across the top of this to indicate this was halved. It, you can go as crazy as you want to and it's not a lot of time. Now, now are there drawbacks to this? Sure. 
Um, the obvious one being that once you've you know, put your mesh in the ZBrush and you've dynameshed it and sliced and diced it, it's pretty much locked in. You're not going to be able to do much with it after that. So, so this is a final step kind of thing, a final polish. But for something like, um, say, a Dyson vacuum or a dust buster or something along those lines, you know, with a lot of organic shapes that kind of uh, blend into each other, and end up having a lot of panel lines and cuts afterwards, it's just, it's a huge time saver. It's a lot faster than having to model that, uh, to model it in by hand. And you don't have to worry about the sub D, which is always a win in my book. So um, I hope you enjoyed that quick tip. Um, that certainly was a quick one. Uh, we'll do something more extensive later on uh, regarding uh, some other ways of doing panel lines, like floaters or skirts and that kind of thing but that's for another video so if you like this one uh, hit subscribe and if you have something you want me to cover in the future please leave it in the comments thanks